production. There are so many things happening during a match and so many details it becomes really hard to catch them all. I've played 12,000 hours of Counter-Strike but I still learn every day. Today we're starting a new series where we will learn from the pros and I will try to debrief the action so you and I both become better players. Sorry, what? The, the upload schedule! Um, so, we're gonna start by watching a few rounds from a pro match between Virtus Pro and Team NVS during the ESL Pro League Season 5. Jumping into the pistol round, we notice Virtus Pro going strong on Banana with an incredible B up skill from Neo right there. Snacks is facing, Neo is gonna support Snacks while Biali is hiding. But not just hiding, he's in a counter flash position, which means he's looking at the wall to prevent any flashes to be effective. His goal is only to react if something happens and surprise the T's if they were to push. But they won't, because NVS is executing what we call a control map. They are all far behind waiting on the cities to do something. We can call that a passive gameplay, every entrance is covered, if you push you can't be unseen. But RPK will give away his position and by going back to T-Ramp, Virtus Pro will understand what's going on. Immediately the rotation takes place, PLE will go back while Neo will boost Snacks over the city spawn. Very well known but yet useful boost, allowing Snacks to see over the smoke if NVS would come back and smoke city spawn. But in the meantime, on the A-bomb site, notice how passive all the cities are. It's one of the best ways to hold and lock down the bomb site. While NVS takes all the time of the world to execute the rush, Virtus Pro has relocated four of their players on the A-bomb site. And and there's gonna be a city at every corner from now on. Clearing the bomb site is gonna be a mess. Inferno's A bomb site is indeed one of the most complex bomb site to attack. Pushing out of apartment, you're gonna have to check pit, graveyard, double box, mid box, side, haystack, and then under you while making sure you're not getting shot from long. If the cities are passive and patient enough to wait for you, it's gonna be a deadly trap. And in the meantime, well, Snacks is still waiting up there, <laughs> probably having the time of his life. The French players finally secured apartment, they're gonna get closer to the entrance and the A-bomb site. XMS will throw the one smoke to push out and it's gonna be a very useful one so let's take a second to talk about it. To reproduce the smoke you will have to go in apartment and hug the wall on the left. Locate the crack on the second tile and stand right on the crack and then you will have to turn and locate this um, thing and aim in the middle of this edge and this edge and it's gonna be a simple throw. It's gonna pop on the haystack and will provide you some cover to rush out and I've seen a lot of people throwing a random smoke that then they will have to cross right after, which is obviously really bad. Here, by walking on the right side, you will have a clear vision. It is a very useful smoke, I recommend it. It has seals of approval. Unfortunately for NVS, since they had no control and no activity over Banana, Snacks didn't call for any rotations, and all the Polish players are holding the A-bomb site. The French team is gonna get crushed one by one even though RPK tried, it was too late, and Virtus Pro will secure the pistol round. This round was a risky play by NVS and I believe they could have done better. You see the thing is, RPK saw that two cities were really aggressive on Banana, so NVS had the intel that Virtus Pro had the full control of Banana, they knew it, and that kind of control allows you to let one player alone on the B bomb site while the rest is gonna focus on the A bomb site. And the only guy on B will be some kind of decoy. By never going back to Banana, by never even trying to challenge Banana, they let Virtus Pro the full control of it and NVS's plan was really easy to read. If only the French went back just to try to secure Banana, they don't have to commit but if at least they take the control of it at least to the car level, well, Snacks would have called a rotation and instead of four cities on the A bomb site, they would have had to face three of them. But I think it's quite interesting to notice how Virtus Pro played it. I wonder if they haven't anti strated NVS's pistol round. And they might very well be, actually. The second round is gonna be interesting as well. The French lost the first round but still chose to buy helmets and pistols to the second one. It's a very common thing to do and here's the basic rule. You lost the pistol round but did you plant the bomb? If yes, eco and buy next. If no, then force helmets and pistols and try to get close range fights to take advantage of your weapon. If played correctly you still have great chances to win the round, it's actually almost a French specialty. This time, NVS is gonna stack over apartment with Happy in the back making sure they don't get backstabbed from Banana. 
once apartment is secured, they will finally adapt and send Scream back to Banana just to make some noise and be sure the cities aren't too close. As soon as the intel is given, XMS will throw the same smoke and Sixer will throw the flash to start the rush. This is gonna be a very useful and simple flash that you will find a use for when you play matchmaking. Just hug the wall on the right side, you will have to crouch and bounce the flash on the chimney. Simple throw and it's gonna pop outside of the apartment helping your teammates to rush. This time it's gonna be more successful, NVS will take full advantage of the pistols in this round. The infamous ability to one shot with a pistol at close range is fully demonstrated here. XMS with the opening on Taz allowing the rest of the team to enter the bombsite and Sixer with the one headshot kill on Pasha to kill the bombsite. While everyone is fighting, Happy is taking care of Long. He will be really aggressive to catch a rotation of guard and Snacks will fall down soon followed by Neo. This round demonstrates the ability of Envious to adapt to a situation. They knew what tools they had and they've made the best out of it and to avoid having 4 cities on A like the previous round, they've sent a decoy over Banana to keep the cities focused on both bomb sites. The next thing to point out is how both teams are gonna have their own routines. First of all, NVS in the T side will almost always proceed like this. Control map with RPK dedicated to a passive control of Banana. Sixer, Scream and XMS will clear apartments slowly while Happy controls middle. Once this routine executed, they will finally decide what to do. Sometimes they're gonna throw a smoke on mid to see what happens, maybe pick a frag, and sometimes they're gonna go back to banana. But this routine is at the very basic core of NVS's T side. They will move slowly, making sure that if someone dies, there will be someone close enough to trade kill. In front of them, Virtus Pro City side is also pretty much always the same. Except for the Echoes, where they will tend to stack on a bomb site, Virtus Pro will function like this. Snacks and Neo are holding banana. Their goal is to be aggressive enough so that Snacks can hold it alone. Once Snacks is in position, Neo will rotate and Snacks will stay alone. His goal is only to delay a push if it comes and call for help if he needs to. He's gonna use all of his utilities in the process. His only role is to deny the access of Banana to Envious. In the meantime on A, Virtus Pro will never play Apartment. They will always stay passive on the site with Pasha alone on long taking the intel on mid. Sometimes when Pasha has an op, he will try to go for an aggressive pick on mid, but only one shot and then will go back, he will never commit too much. The basic plays makes that no one moves except Neo who goes back and forth depending on Snax's call from Banana. And that's pretty much it. When the team switches side, they will both adapt another routine. The T side of Virtus Pro starts with a control map as well, but this time more focused on middle and banana than apartment. Most of the time they won't even bother to get in apartment unless they will really push out later. But their focus on banana has been noticed by Envious and they will adapt with a free guys defense on B. XMS and Happy will hold banana while Sixer sticks around at the beginning of the round and will finally go back to A after a few seconds. Once again, the team playing the city side will hold A in a very passive mode, staying out of apartment and backed off site or pit. And we find again this mechanism to push a player into banana so the rest of the team can focus on the other bomb site. Here's a great play by XMS to demonstrate the utility of such a display. It's 11 to 8 on the scoreboard and down to a 2 on 3 situation. Neo and Pasha will choose to go back to B. Sixer and Happy will stay safe on A while XMS is gonna be alone holding the B bomb site. When you're alone on B, you might argue that the best option is gonna be to stay safe on site. But if you do and you die, there's no one around to trade kill. And even worse, if you didn't hear them coming, the moment you call for a rotation is already too late. They won't be anyone in time to trade kill if you die on site the moment you call for help. XMS knows this and decides to jump above the wall so he can grab a precious intel. As soon as he sees a T, he's gonna go back instantly and do his job, which is gonna be buying more time. He will throw a smoke to slow them down and go back slowly so he can hear what's going on. When he hears the footsteps, he decides to go back on site and buy the precious seconds needed for his teammate to rotate. This isn't a flashy play, but surely wander around. Remember that when you play in a team, the individual flashy plays isn't what matters. It's gonna be a team game and you have to think about what's best for the team. Let's picture a different scenario. If XMS was like me, which is a greedy fuck. He would have picked after he spotted one of the T's in Banana. And what can happen from this? At best, he kills them both, wins $600 of reward kill, gets up on the scoreboard, 
and that's pretty much it. He would have put at risk this round and maybe the match for only two frags, that's it. Because if he dies, which is very likely because they both spotted each other, he lets the bomb site be open, no one can rotate in time and he's gonna be down to a 2 on 2 with the bomb ticking. So this time, the advantage will be for the T's and not the CTs anymore. XMS made the right call and executed it perfectly. He's not looking for the flashy plays but still gets the job done as safe as possible. And that's your role when you are alone on the bomb site. Buying time, not being the hero. Unless you're a greedy fuck like me. So that's it for this video, I will have some more of these coming soon, so subscribe if you haven't already. And if you liked the video, don't forget to drop a like as it will help me out greatly. If you want some more, you can tap on the thumbnail showing up right now, leading you to other tutorials. I will see you on the next video, until then, farewell.